about yourself so those that may not know on the stream. Hi, uh, I'm Ian Frazier. I'm lead designer on Mass Effect Andromeda. What does the lead designer do? Uh, in broad strokes, I'm responsible for the game being fun. So the art director makes the game look good. The creative director is supposed to pull all the pieces together. Tech director does code. I manage the design team and make sure that all the, the pieces of progression and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay fit together and that they're fun when you have a controller or a mouse or keyboard in your hands. Okay, so that being said, what is your favorite thing about Andromeda versus any other game you've worked on that you love? Oh, that's tricky. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the characters. We have some really, really lovable characters in the game and in the squad and the crew and elsewise in the game. Um, and it's just really fun getting to know them. Even after being on the game for almost four years now, I'm still learning new things about our characters. And that's really cool. So I, I get this question, and I'm sure the chat's all like, what romance options? Tell, tell, tell romance. Oh, I can't, I can't do that. We're actually trying to make sure that most fans learn by actually playing the game, discovering them naturally. OK. But there are romance options there in the game. There are certainly romance options in the game. And do you get to romance everyone? I mean, you can try. No, you cannot romance everyone in the game. And for those who've asked, you cannot romance your sibling. I'm very sorry. Oh, yes, because the main two characters are Both brother characters and sister. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Really, Internet? Really? It's, it's, that was Tumblr. It was Tumblr, wasn't it? Uh, I'll blame it on Tumblr. Okay. Oh, yay. Um, hey, Drifter, can I steal your chair? Absolutely. Thank you. I'm not doing anything. I'm a useless part of the interview. You are not. Thank you. You make all the magic happen. You made all the magic happen, and I'm going to make you sit here and ask him questions. You should. <laughs> Which one? Right. <laughs> exactly. So, Mass Effect Andromeda begins 600 years into the future, yep. and we're no longer in the Milky Way cluster. We, where are we? What, what's, what's going on with the human race? So we've actually moved to not, not the entire human race, but right. the people in the arcs okay. have gone uh, 638 years into the future. They've arrived in Andromeda, in a particular area of Andromeda, the next galaxy over, called the Helios Cluster. And you don't know a whole lot about it going in. You have kind of some of the things we've released publicly, sort of the advertising materials for what's there in the Helios Cluster. But you're going to find out pretty quickly that things aren't exactly as planned. And then the adventure kind of takes off from there. Okay. So, talking about, you know, the Helios Cluster. I'm getting hiccups. Of course, I'm getting hiccups. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> so, um, you know, the chat's got tons of uh, questions going on, and most of them I'm not even going to address because you guys get your minds out of the gutter, for goodness sakes. Go read a book or something but, and play a game. Um, so, when it, when, it come, when it came for the idea for Mass Effect Andromeda, you know, a lot of, obviously, the Mass Effect 3 gave everybody really good closure. In case you haven't played it, I'm not going to spoil you. Um, why Andromeda? Why did you, what was the thought process in, in going to this next game? Well, so the Mass Effect trilogy is very much about a particular character, about Commander Shepard and their story, which is very much galaxy spanning in scale. Even from the very first game, you're traveling all over the Milky Way during the, doing different things. You do that throughout all three games. By the time that story was done, that's a very encapsulated, self-contained tale that we can't really continue, because depending on the ending you chose, very different setups for what happens to the galaxy afterwards. But we didn't want to just you know, drop Mass Effect forever. We wanted to go back to that universe. We wanted to tell new stories, new things set in the Mass Effect setting. I um, went, all right, well, how, how can we do that? We don't, we don't want to you know, break our own lore. We don't, we don't want to lock everybody down to one canon ending. Oh, okay, we can, we can do this. We can go to another place in time with roots back to the trilogy, because the idea is that the arcs in our game left circa Mass Effect 2. So a lot of the technology and things you expect from the trilogy, they continue on into Andromeda. Okay. So with that being said, if it's 600 years, are we going to see a lot of the same technology that we saw in the Mass Effect universe? Are there any familiar things and we'll see, like whether it's a vehicle or a weapon? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's a mix of old and new. So you'll see things that are very much Mass Effect 2 era, weapons and powers and stuff carrying through. But also you're in a new place. You're discovering new cultures from, from the ancient remnant to the cats and some other races of the game. And so as you discover those, you're going to find out about their technology. And we've been letting you do things with our crafting system, like build a gun or build armor that's designed after this new technology you've encountered. You don't have to look like Mass Effect 2 Shepard all the way through the game. Now, Shepard was a soldier. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole uh, the team on Andromeda are not, that's right? right? What are, what are their classes? What are their roles? So Ryder is an explorer. You start off as a recon specialist at the beginning of the game. And then some things happen. You get more abilities above and beyond that. But um, you're set up to be a big, big Star Trek. You're very okay. much a mixture of diplomat and soldier and explorer, someone who wears a lot of different hats. 
and the different members of your crew and your squad that you accumulate over time come from very different backgrounds. Okay. You know, you'll, you'll have a veteran who's sort of the person who, who gets stuff, the one who has the connections and is able to kind of pull people together and get the things you need. Uh, someone like PB, who's more of a uh, Space Indiana Jones. She, she, she's a dungeon delver, likes to get out there and look into ruins and be the first person to new places, which works out well in a new galaxy. Awesome, very much. I mean, I'm sorry I'm getting people like telling me advice across the way. I'm like, okay, I got you, I got you. Um, so, obviously, you've been working on this game for months and months, and probably you know, living at hundreds of years, living underneath your desk, you know, as as game devs do. What is your favorite part about this game? Oh, that's tough. Um... If I have to go with one thing, I think I'll say the moment-to-moment -moment combat. Now, that's, that's where a lot of my focus has been over time, so maybe I'm, I'm biased there. But it's, as someone who loved Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, we took what I think was late Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, after all the expansions, as our starting point for the combat in this game. And by adding verticality and a lot of new locomotion options and individual cooldowns, you can combo between things more easily. I'm really happy with where we landed. It just feels good. Now, what is the difference in the combat, in, in like the, the user interface w between Mass Effect 3 and Mass Effect Andromeda? Uh, it's pretty different. Uh, the first thing is that cover is non-modal in our game. It's something that, that happens sort of automatically as you enter into cover. You just get near cover and you'll, you'll take it automatically, assuming your, your gun's out. So you don't have a button dedicated to that. And it's not sticky. You don't get stuck in cover the way you would in the previous games. Um, so we had that from pretty early on in development, sort of iterating on it. We added jump, so now you have this jet pack and you can be, you know, launch yourself six meters into the air. You can hover in the air and actually do a tight aim while you're doing that and stabilize yourself. Um, we have our, our dodges didn't make any sense anymore once we had a jet pack. Like, let me do this nice slow uh, somersault across the floor. It just looked stupid in the context of what the game was. We ripped all that out and we ended up doing our, our dodges either using biotics if you're a biotic character or with the jet pack for like a soldier kind of character. Uh, so it's, it's a very different feel. And if you think about PC, like with mouse and keyboard controls, we separated out all the individual elements of the game uh, in a way that we weren't able to do in Mass Effect 3. So like instead of the space bar doing 10 things, you have individual keys for different actions. And that's something that we, we got to work together with, Mass, with you guys on was the fact that the Mass Effect uh, GA-10 will let you know when you need, which, when you're on fire, when you're about to die, when you need a job. Like it blinks at you. It's like, hey, stupid, do this thing or you are going to regret this. Um, now, a lot of, I got to play it at the PR event a couple weeks back, and one of the things that there, a lot of questions were about is porting in your character. You know, obviously, one through three, you could bring your, your shepherd with you. Do you have any of that ability with Andromeda? Good question. So, a couple things. First, we do, in character gen, let you choose the gender of your shepherd from the trilogy, uh, because we do reference shepherd in a couple places. Um, I want to make sure that we're saying it correctly, but we don't carry over your actual save game. Like, if you never played the trilogy, that's totally fine. There's no direct continuity of save game there. 600 years different. Yeah, there's not, not a lot of reason narratively to have those direct ties, um, but we are set up so that if we're able, if we do future games down the run, we have everything saved so we can continue from here on. Great. Uh, if the chat, if you guys do have some questions, please make sure to ask them. I, as soon as I can see them, uh, obviously they're going pretty quickly, so I'm trying to keep up. Uh, ask some Q and A's. Uh, so, try just trying to just trying to keep up with the what the chat's saying. So, ask us your questions. Uh, the backwards carnifex. It's backwards. That is a bug. She holds her gun backwards. Okay. So there you go. There's there's your your question answered, Chronicles. Uh, yeah, can you? There might already be a fix for that in patch. I don't know. I just saw it yesterday. Uh, you know, stuff happens. Uh, they're asking about a specific character. They are indeed. So Jal, with his like 900 page um, forum thread, seems to be very popular. Um, we're gonna have more information about Jal coming up pretty soon. So I don't wanna spoil that just yet. Keep your eyes open. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, can we deploy forward stations whilst inside Nomad? Uh, yes, actually. Just getting near one of those forward station locations, we'll, uh, we'll summon it in and drop it. You don't have to get out of the car. And how do biotics deal with barrier and armor now that warped got killed? Um, so you have different abilities on the biotic tree that you can evolve to be specifically good against uh, shields, or you can rely on your squad mates and specifically spec them to be anti-shield characters. Okay. Melee and cover, and can you use objects like chairs and stuff? Uh, you can do melee and cover, but sadly we don't have the cover grabs anymore. Something I was hoping to get in, we didn't quite get in. You can punch someone in the face over your cover, however, that works just fine. And I'm sorry, what was the other one there? How about can you use chairs and different things in the game? Like Oh, yeah. So that is one of the changes with our with our biotics in the game is that if you look at Mass Effect 1, they did a little bit with uh, simulation physics. They have some physical objects in the world, more than just enemies getting picked up by biotics. 
that kind of went away in the later games. We've brought that back. So we have a lot more stuff in the world now that will actually react when you throw out a singularity and clump up. You can pick, you know, pick a brick up and hit somebody in the head with it. We have a lot more of that physics getting used. And I can see a couple sibling arguments there, you know, bricks being used. Okay, so about the storyline. Will it all be open world or will it be linear portions? Uh, it's both. It's, uh, we have, I'd say Mass Effect 1 is probably the best reference point. So you have open exploration, but you have uh, what we call gold missions, so, so more linear elements within that experience. Uh, and then we have also quest content within the more open aspects of the game. Uh, let's see, is, there, is the day one patch complete? Uh, yes, the day one patch is complete as of, I think, yesterday. Woohoo! And how many crew members can you take on missions? Uh, you take two at a time. It's very similar to the trilogy. Uh, do we still have biotic explosions? Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, <laughs> dot, 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 boom, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, we do. We have uh, all the kinds of combos that you saw in the trilogy, but they're actually a little bit easier to do now. We've changed some of the mechanics around how they're triggered. Okay. Let's see. Uh, any big space battles in Mass Effect and Trauma? Oh, I'm not going to answer that. Oh, spoiler alert. Uh, how long is the game? I don't think I'm allowed to answer that one. Okay. I can tell you it is very big. It is by, by a substantial margin the biggest Mass Effect game. I could so make a joke there, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm holding it in. Uh, can we access EA Origin access at 12.01? I don't know if you know that. I don't know what time. He doesn't know that. This man is too important for that type of question. Give us something real. Come on, guys. Are there cats in space? Can there be or are there? Uh, he, he said cats in space. I mean, have you seen Jaw? He's kind of a little bit. Yeah. Uh, do we still have melee light attack like uh Chain, light attack chain like in Mass Effect 3? Uh, no, actually. Melee is usually, well, there's some variations, but melee is normally a single hit. And then there's air melee, which is a different attack that you get if you hit the button while you're airborne. Okay. Why did you decide to remove weapons from the Tempest slash Nomad? We didn't remove them. They never had them. Uh, early on in development, the idea was to differentiate both from the vehicles that you're used to from the trilogy and also to really drive home that explorer vibe, to feel like, no, no, you're not, you're not soldiers, you're not military. We really wanted to kind of turn that corner, so we looked for opportunities to do that. Okay. Uh, if a species isn't appearing in single player, does that rule out a chance to appear in multiplayer? It definitely does not. Ooh. Um, male, male romances on the squad. Answer the question. I will answer it on March 21st. How does it feel after five years to publish this baby of yours and watch it take flight and become one of the great best games ever? Aww. Oh, that's sweet. That's very nice. Well, Good I, job, I, I hope you really enjoy the game. It's uh, it feels really good. We've been working on it for, as you say, a very very long time, and, and glad to be done. <laughs> Would like to sleep for a month or six. So um, family, maybe. Maybe so. I heard they're still alive, so I'm, I hope I hope so. Okay. But uh, no, we're really excited. Good. Uh, can you tell us anything about character creation? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm a little surprised we haven't shown it yet, to be honest. I think maybe we're just waiting for fans to do it themselves with, uh, with the early access. Um, what can I tell you? First, everything's based on actual head scans now. So in the trilogy, you had, you know, the official Shepard, uh, then everything else was just, just sliders. We still have sliders. You can you know, move your eyes around and fiddle with your nose, whatever you like. But the basis for all the custom heads are actual humans that we scan. So awesome. higher fidelity from the start. So um, I actually, we have uh, Rana, the face of Samara uh, yeah. here. She's hanging out with us. So... Will we be seeing more of those type of people at conventions joining in on the fray? That's an interesting idea. We haven't talked about that. But we should totally it, see that like have a Mass Effect reunion, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the heads. All the heads. Yeah. Yeah, one line up. <laughs> oh, like, like, a, like a future Rama. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's on a shelf. Jars. <laughs> okay, uh, can we choose not to recruit okay. squad mates? Um, I'm trying to think if that's possible. I don't think you can avoid recruiting them outright. The timing of them varies, but I don't think you can ever avoid recruiting them. Okay. Can your squad mates leave you, depending on your choices? I'm not going to answer that one. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more in depth about, and I missed the question. Uh, I'm going to, it began with a K. I'm sorry. K. Yes. Andros, maybe? Maybe. I'm trying to think what else begins with a K <laughs> you'd be asking about. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. Are there a lot of options in the character creator, more than Inquisition anyway? Um, it's set up very different from the Inquisition in terms of how we do the head morphs. I'm not sure how it compares beat for beat. I'd have to actually look at them side by side. Okay. Uh, will there be a photo mode? Uh, no. I could see us adding that in a patch, but a ship we definitely don't okay. have. Okay. Uh, is there an easy way to share your writers online? Yes, absolutely. I don't think we've shown how that works yet, but you can upload yourself, your sibling, and, and by extension your father. Okay. And then you can pull that down and the people that down later. Awesome. Kent was the person. Tell us more about Kent. 
All right. What can I say that isn't horribly spoilery? Uh, Ted are very much, yeah, very much one of the bad guys in the game. We've released a little bit of information about them. You're going to come across them very, very early in the game. And uh, God, what can I say that's not spoilery? That's hard. Um, they're, fun, they're so much fun. I, I will say that a lot of the stuff, like people react pretty well to the art on those guys, the weapons and armor and stuff. As I mentioned earlier, you can get that stuff. It's not exclusive to them. So if you want to be all kitted up, you can. Um, are customization options gender block, gender locked? Uh, no, you, you, you can fully make up, up your guy. I think, uh, beards, take that back. Beards are gender locked, I believe, but everything else is not. And are there different outfits available for squad mates? Obviously the, the chat really wants us to be fashionable and gender equality. Clear, clear. I'm very proud of you guys. It's good. Gender equality. No, we've, uh, we've upped customization options for the players. Like, you can colorize your casual outfits and whatnot now. We have a lot more options in terms of mixing and matching armor for the player, unlike the trilogy where it's like a single suit with bolt-ons. Um, however, the squad mates who do not customize their look. Their, their armor and weapon is part of who they are. Our model was very much, uh, if you remember Jane from Firefly with yep. Vera? Yep. It's like, okay, every, every one of the squad mates has their Vera. They have their iconic thing that is what they're good at. Okay. And the idea behind that, aside from giving them character, was to try to make their AI better at actually doing that one thing. Versus like, well, you know, Garrus is kind of a sniper, but maybe he punches things. We wanted to have like a sniper who's actually a sniper and so forth. So more of a specific class structure yeah. in order, okay. You can change them with their skills and whatnot, but they are still meant to be a particular kind of role. Gotcha. Now, they're asking about a cinematic trailer with Sarah. Will we get to see more about Sarah Ryder? I recommend poking Aaron about that. I have no power. Okay, all right. I'll, I'm just going to poke her over and over again. That just sounds incredibly unprofessional of me to do. Um, can you tell us more about Vetra? How do we meet her? Uh, you'll meet Vetra pretty early in the game. I don't know if I want to spoil exactly how. I, I, I was going to say, I, I met her. Say, so, yeah, did you? She's nice. She's yeah. nice. And I'm just like, I just want to listen to her voice actors all day long. She's so good. I know. Yeah, Seriously. She, we were pretty happy with her until the voice came in. We're like, oh, okay, now. All right. She's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Win, win, win. Uh, let's, can you tell us one random thing about the game you've never shared before and can share? Okay. Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, there is a very old city you'll get to at one point in the game, and it has one of my favorite Easter eggs in it. So if you want to find the cool Easter eggs, when you get to the old city, look really, really carefully everywhere. Okay. Write that down, guys. Write that down. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. How quickly will the entire Rider Squad be assembled? Early game or more spor sporadic? Uh, it really depends. So you get a lot of them quite early, but beyond that, because of exploration, like it might be a while. It depends how much you kind of, you know, move about and look for things. Okay. Uh, will you guys be showing multiplayer soon? Uh, we'd actually be showing it all of PAX. People are playing it uh, on Xbox and on PC. Now, where can they go play that? Uh, so downstairs here at the Xbox booth, we have several games set up. And then at the Bioware base in the second floor here at PAX, we have PC set up where you can play with controller or mouse and keyboard. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Will there be a space hamster? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, do people in Andromeda learn of the Reaper invasion? It's a good question. So if you think about the timing, we left around Mass Effect 2. So the, the attack on the Citadel has already happened of a Sovereign. Um, most people at that time thought it was the Geth. Most people didn't really believe Shepard's story. So you know that most people, you know, that would be going on this expedition would certainly not think, oh no, the Reapers. Uh, but is it possible that some of that information got through? Very possible. Uh, who's your favorite character in the game? Uh, so I, I hate to say this because we're so many of us lean this way now, but I just love Jal so much. <laughs> like Su Subi's a close second, but Jal is Jal is a magical creature. Uh, bio, bio. I can't say your name. Uh, did any of the voice actors change your perception of a given character? Uh, yeah, yeah. Vetra, like I said, Vetra, that jump in quality between you know the temp voice and then the real voice is yeah. just. I mean, I was already pretty happy with Vetra, but that was. A dramatic leap. She jumped like you know four notches up in the uh, the, yeah. the roster. Um, what happens when you try to drive the nomad over a friend? Uh, you generally can't. Usually, people that you could run over that you wouldn't want to run over in you know, fairly populated areas. Uh, and we, we generally keep the car from going into those areas. And if you are, it'll, it'll slow down and stuff. Okay. It's... Can you wake up everyone in cryosleep? You mean like over one playthrough or multiple playthroughs? Not sure. Um. I don't think it's possible to get all of them in a single room. Actually, no, it's definitely not, because you hit the cap before you get them all. You can get most, but not all. Okay. Uh, can, let's see, can we act, interact with our sibling often? 
I, oh God, the spoilery questions, you're killing I'm me. I'm sorry, I'm just reading them. Uh, yeah, the, the sibling is present in the game. Uh, you will be able to interact with them as to how often I think I'll avoid that. Okay. Is there a seventh member in the squad? No, just the six squad mates. Okay. Uh, space plaid weave confirmed? I wish. That's amazing. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm saving that for DLC. That's going to be our crowning achievement. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a special, like, Christmas yeah. skin. Christmas like, it, free DLC. Christmas dude, you can't say that now because yeah, everybody's going to be... That is not a real thing. That is not a real thing. It's a, a joke. Uh, that would be awesome, but it is a joke. Does the trust system work like the approval system in Dragon Age? Uh, no. We, we actually did experiment with the trust system, which was more like the approval system earlier in development. Uh, at this point, it's much more... This isn't just for squad mates, but the whole game. We do a lot more point-for-point point, uh, reactions to your choices. So instead of, I did 50 nice things, ergo this person likes me now, it's like, no, you did exactly this, 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 and this. And so they might react to those things specifically. When, uh, when we did the playthrough, they told us you guys had, it, had improved the overall reaction scale as far as it was a little bit more in-depth. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, so in, in terms of reactions to you, we have kind of a scale of, you know, them being sort of neutral to you, to being, being, being very into you, romantically or otherwise. Uh, but beyond that, it's the way that you, the way the choices that we give you that have expanded. So if you look at the trilogy, especially by Mass Effect 3, you had your Paragon option, Renegade option, maybe some, uh, some uh, Inquisitions. Wow, wrong, wrong title. <laughs> some Investigates over on the side to ask questions. We still have Investigates, but because we've gotten rid of Paragon Renegade, we now have this tone system instead. We have four different tones. Sometimes we let you choose two of them at a time. Sometimes we let you choose all four at a time. And they're meant to let you develop your personality in a more, um, say, nuanced way than you could do with the trilogy and without that moral flavor. So we don't tell you, you know, you're a jerk because you have chosen to do this in this situation. No, you're, just, you're expressing yourself, and the game reacts accordingly. So it's less people are less able to kind of pre predetermine their pathway. Yeah, we want, uh, one of the things about the trilogy is that, and, and don't get me wrong, I love the trilogy, but you do start going, ah, blue, 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 and just turning your brain off, and we didn't want people to do that. We want the players to actually kind of look at what's there, think about it, and make a choice accordingly. Uh, so Drop Steve uh, wanted to know, can you tell me how, no, he already said he can't tell us how many hours, but Fine Cheddar asked, how well can you dance? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he means in-game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I'm actually not sure which of us is worse. That's really debatable. No, it's, uh, so Ryder is, I would say, better than Shepard, but um, you're going to have to watch it. I, I can't give a judgment on there, there, it. You just, you got to expect the gifts. Just yeah, be there, prepared there to capture. Gifts. There will be That's gifts. Right. Um, are there any plans for a story DLC? I uh, can't talk about anything post-launch right now. Okay. What's your favorite villain in Mass Effect Andromeda? Oh, like specific player to fight. Um, I really like the Hydra Mech. The Hydra Mechs are a lot of fun. Um, the we haven't shown that yet. Never mind. Uh, and the I don't have beeping options. Yeah, too, I'm so. thinking the giant uh, the giant robot thing that you may have seen in some of the some of the trailers. It's called the Architect. Uh, I, that thing's pretty cool. Uh, will the digital soundtrack feature the beautiful soundtrack we heard at the end of Exploration and Discovery gameplay trailer? Uh, yeah, that is song, uh, it's directly from the game, so yes. Uh, can you change the color, the skin color of your rider? So tell us a little bit more about customization. Yeah, you can you can change the actual you know head structure and then fiddle around with individual elements like I mentioned earlier, the eyes, nose, and whatnot. You can change skin tone. Uh, you can do facial hair in the case of men. You can do makeup. One of the big differences from the trilogy is that if you remember the trilogy, you're always military. So your, your hairstyles, your coloration, and everything are very, very rigid, very limited on purpose by design. Uh, we're not, so we're able to open that up a little bit. So we have some, some wilder hairstyles, more interesting hairstyles. And we have like, we have the neon blue hair with the crazy purple streak. And um, you can do, you know, uh, tattoos, pretty wild makeup and scars. You can just be a little bit more, uh, uh, less conservative looking uh, in this game. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. Which is your favorite romance? Oh, I can't answer that because to answer it would confirm one we haven't confirmed yet. Well, what about in the previous iterations of Mass Effect? What's your favorite? Oh, romance? Uh, I really liked Miranda. Tally, uh, Tally has always had a warm place in my heart. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with Tally if I pick just one. All right. Uh, let's see. Looking at the question, questions. Uh, can we interact with objects on the Tempest Nexus? Um, I'm not sure which objects, I mean, yes, but I'm not sure which objects you're getting at specifically. It's not like every single thing can be picked up and thrown around, if that's what you're asking. Um, but there is plenty of interaction in those environments. Uh, do we need to make a single player save in order to play multiplayer? No, not at all. So you can go to multiplayer the way you would have in Mass Effect 3, just main menu, multiplayer, done. You can play multiplayer without playing single player at all if you wanted to. Uh, the new thing we've added is that you can easily go back and forth between them if you want to. And we have some rewards that can actually funnel into single player from multiplayer if you want. Uh, 
Um, can you, anything more you can tell us about the Quarren Lost Ark? Am I saying Quarren? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's a crosser, I'm like, can't see. Um, what can I tell you? Not really. Um, so within the game, there's a lot of information about what's going on with the different arcs. Uh, there's a book, as some of you may have seen, that also goes into some of that backstory slash side story, time-wise, uh, what's going on with the arcs. But uh, I don't think I can say more than that. Well, you have a mobile app. Uh, that's possible. Okay, possible. Uh, do black holes have a special meaning in the game? Uh, I don't know if I would say a special meaning, uh, but there is one that's very prominent within the Helios cluster that you'll definitely see as you fly around space, and that it certainly gets referenced. I wouldn't say it's like a game about the black hole, but it's there. Okay. Uh, can you talk about Ellen Ryder? Uh, she's your mom. Yay, she's my mom! Which one is cooler, Scott or Sarah? Oh, that's the voice actors would hunt me down if I answered that question, so I can't. Both. They, they're equally loved, but in different ways. Like your mom loves you. I hear them both equally, so, okay. you know. Can we explore the Hyperion? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's actually, you can explore it uh, very, very early in the game. Uh, can you customize your squad's outfits? Uh, no, as I was saying earlier, the squad outfits are baked into the character. Okay. They're, they're, they are what they are. Uh, let's see, uh, is the Alkalite back? Alkalite? Oh, the gun! The Alkalite, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we brought back the Disciple. I can't actually remember if we have the Alkalite or not. We definitely have the Disciple. Now I feel like I need to go check that. Sorry. Oh, well, you don't have all this memorized I after did. after I the really past, did. like, how many years we, of looking at details? and tweaked enough things that it's, it's sometimes, like, I'll, I'll use dev names for creatures that have changed. It's like, what, what do we still have? We have that? Yeah. We definitely have the Disciple. Not sure about the Acolyte. We're doing the thing. Uh, what is your favorite class in Andromeda? Oh, uh, so historically, I'm very much a Vanguard. If I had to pick one, I'd still say that. But used to not care for Sentinels at all, with the exception of the Vortune one with the Flamethrower. He was awesome. Uh, but in the single player, I never really cared for Sentinels. I really like our Sentinel. It's, it's a really close second to Vanguard for me now. Uh, does the AI have any battleships? Battle oh, um, well, you mean in the strike teams, maybe? Or? You said, does the AI have any battleships? I'm not sure what that would mean in this context. Maybe they play battleship? I, I don't know. Oh, oh the Andromeda. God. So, I deeply regret that we named it the Andromeda Initiative because every time someone says AI, as someone who works in games, I immediately think you mean oh. you know, the, the artificial intelligence of the game. It's like, what are you talking about? You're talking about the Andromeda Initiative. Uh, they do have some ships that are armed, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Uh, can we keep the n default name Sarah or Scott so it'll be said, but change the characters to look in CC? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so you can choose to name your character or not. You can choose to customize them or not. Uh, you can do that with just your twin as well. You can't give your twin a custom name, but you can do that yourself. And each of those things is handled independently. Okay. How do you travel in Andromeda without mass relays? Traditional FTL. So if you look at the trilogy, uh, they use the mass relays to get from cluster to cluster across a very large galaxy. This entire game is set in one cluster, just a whole lot more dense than what you would have seen in the trilogy. So traditional FTL, here for you lore nerds out there, our ship can go about 13 light years per day, uh, which is slightly faster than the Normandy. Um, so that's how we get around. Does the game have multiple endings? Can't talk about the end. Okay, can't talk about the end. Was the Alec Ryder spoiler at the gameplay panel intentional or was it merely an accident? You don't have to answer I'm this. I'm not too sure which spoiler that was. What okay, was so that? we're not going to go there. Maybe? Maybe uh, it's amazing. I don't know. Was it, like, was it the best? All right. What's your favorite melee weapon? Oh, I think the Asari sword. That one actually, you can use biotics to teleport with it. It's, it's really cool. Uh, let's see. Will there be more world hubs besides Nexus? Yes, absolutely. We have several hubs. Uh, B5, you keep asking about NVIDIA's game works, uh, I, NVIDIA's, I'm going to, uh, double check that, so that's why I haven't answered it yet. Uh, will we be able to interact with our, is that a, I, yeah, I never it goes so that. fast. I know, I can never say that. Uh, describe a cool mission without spoiling it. Well, there's this one where, um, you have your, your allies, and, uh, but you have to get the thing, but the bad guys don't want you to get the thing. But then that thing happens that you don't see coming, and then it's like, well, you have to deal with the thing, but and they're, they're shooting scene. at you. Yeah, there's a cutscene. It's a really good one. And there's that choice you make, and then later you might regret it, but yeah. then there's bullets, and there's more bullets, and, yeah. uh, well, then at the end, you know, it's, it's actually quite, uh, quite emotional. Feels? You get feels. the feels. Oh, yeah. feels, man, feels. I still uh, regret what I did. I don't know a person who hasn't played Mass Effect that just doesn't have some sort of regret in there. Like, mostly like, oh. We, we do have some of those, like, 
at the time you're like, oh, this is hard. And then later, we'll be, you know, we kick you in the stomach like we yes, do. Yes. It's like, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's hard. exactly. Uh, can you prime, tar prime a target with cryo and then detonate it with biotics? Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Is Sam uh, a like justice, a K what? AKA peeping Tom? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to read this, okay. but I started. No, no, you're, you're committed now. Uh, committed. Sam, Sam is by default omnipresent, but there may be times in the game where you ask Sam to turn off the camera, so to speak. Okay. Can you have a colorblind mode in the game? Unfortunately, no, we don't have a colorblind mode. We have uh, a lot of other accessibility options, but we weren't able to get that one. What in. about audio cue? Somebody was asking about uh, that. Most things that are, that are you know, gameplay relevant do have audio cues. Okay, great. Uh, does the Ar Archon ketify other species? I'm uh, not really going into how the cat do their thing okay. just yet. They are bad guys. That's about all we're saying. They are, they, are, they are bad guys. Okay. Is there a tribute? No, I'm not reading that. Are there di other dialogue trees fully explorable? Or do you have to be careful what you say? Because you might lock yourself out of romance options or loyalties. Um, I don't think you can lock yourself out of a loyalty. I think they're always possible. I'm trying to think if there's any exceptions to that. Uh, by and large, no. You, you express yourself however you want to express yourself. And the game's there. You're not going like, to miss out on big chunks of it. Um, you're just going to be a different kind of person as a result of those choices. Uh, a lot of people ask about multiplayer gameplay if they're not at PAX. What are their options for seeing that? Uh, I'm not sure exactly the timeline, but I know that between now and SHIP, probably pretty darn soon, since there's very little time left before SHIP, we are going to be showing more multiplayer gameplay online, just like YouTube, in a place where people can see it. Okay. But if uh, you're at PAX, please play it. Hands-on is just so much better than seeing a video. It's a beautiful, beautiful game, and I, the first, the first, yeah, I was sitting there and I had chills going on when the first cutscene went through. I was like, this heart, this game's gonna break my heart, I already know it. Uh, will explorable areas in the Nexus get bigger the more we finish the Nexus? Um, what can I say there? Uh, short answer is yes. I'm not gonna go into detail, but short answer is yes. Great. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Will we be able to interact with our space monkey? I, uh, I, yes, you, you can interact. This is not a euphemism. You can interact with your space monkey. What they asked for. I know. That's the thing about this fandom. It's like, you're like, I, you, I'm watching you guys. Watch I know. I know what you're going through. Um, so, will there be debates in the game about Mako versus the Nomad and which one? Do you prefer? Uh, so the, the vehicles, will there be debates yeah. about which one? Uh, I don't think we actually, well, I don't know about that. I keep finding conversations in the game that I didn't know were there, so maybe there's one in there about <laughs> the Mega versus the Nomad. It's possible. Okay. Um, I know that for me, I much prefer the Nomad. I have fond memories of the Mako. It was, it's, it's lovable in its own way. There's this great gif of it just being ridiculous, uh, Goomba stomping things. But uh, for actually controller in the hand or keyboard in the hand, yeah, the um, uh, Nomad is a whole lot better to drive. Right. I, I mean, I, I like driving. It was fun. It was, you know, very, very bouncy. Um, let's see what else. Uh, do you have to cooperate with a native Andromeda species? Uh, you can decide how exactly you're going to get along with folks there in Andromeda. And um, you can, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to say more than that. You have some choices there. Okay. Is Sam unshackled like Edie? Sam is an interesting part of the story that I, I'm afraid, can't go into into very deep. Yes, we got. We only we only have a little bit left to wait, like one, know, like twenty terrible. days. Not even twenty days, like yeah. like ten and no, ten and counting. It's killing me because the problem is that we we the little bits we release through trailers and stuff. Yeah. Every tiny piece of information we give, folks will start to piece things together. So to avoid massive spoilers, we often yeah, have to avoid even the little spoilers. Spoiler. Sorry, uh, yeah. Not intentional. Uh, not intentional. Sorry, it's 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 a long day. <laughs> um, how advanced are the Angara? Uh, pretty advanced, actually. I would say a little bit less than the Milky Way as of the time that when you arrive, but they're not, uh, they're not like free space flight or anything. They're, they're pretty advanced. Okay. Uh, will they call you Scott or Sarah if you don't customize? Absolutely, yeah. If you keep, you can customize your look however you want. That doesn't change what they call you. But if you choose to keep the default name, people will refer to you by your first name. Okay. Uh, will there be a suicide mission 2.0? Uh, if you mean a mission where your choices will result in different things happening in the mission, yes. If you mean a literal suicide mission where half a squad dies, no. Which writer is the lore writer? There isn't one, actually. So a big difference between us and the trilogy is that both writers, they're both independent characters that exist in the game world. It's not like, well, you chose to be male shepherd, so there is no female shepherd. No, they're both people. So I guess they're both the lore writer. Well, you can't like, just suddenly get rid of your twin. I mean, that would be bad. I mean, there's that airlock in Act 2, but, but other than that, you can't do it. Let's not get rid of your twin, guys.
Um, let's see. Can we land on and explore planets other than the seven golden worlds? Oh, uh, again with the spoilers. Um, you can land on a variety of planets, which may or may not match up with the seven golden worlds. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can you play as a good guy and get a perfect playthrough? Um, I'm not sure what that would mean. There's not like a, like, because we don't have Paragon Renegade, there's not like, oh, I, I choose to be the Paladin in each opportunity. That as a concept doesn't exist. Um, you could certainly choose the tones that you feel are the right thing and get all the way through the game that way. Do you still get locked into sync kills? Uh, some of them, yes. Yeah. So the big difference with our sync kills is that they all have, uh, at least I believe, very readable tells. So you have a little bit of a window to get out of there before the thing rips your head off. Okay. All right. Uh, can we change squad mates' weapons? No, you already answered that, because they have their Jane weapon. Uh, did the riders know how to dance? He already answered that. He said, yes, it did. Surprisingly uh, popular question. You know what? Dancing, outfits, sex. Really the, the important things in life. It's basically, we're all teenagers. Yeah, I'm getting you know, uh, Real world and drama. Okay. I know some games have pre-downloaded, even though the patch was done, you could download it into the game itself, which is, I don't know what that question is. Uh, I think we'll probably ask about when the patch comes down, and based on what I've been seeing online, I think it's already downloading, at least on some of the platforms. Okay. Uh, how much authority do you have as a Pathfinder? Uh, it actually changes over the course of the game, and you're not actually the Pathfinder at the beginning of the game, so you'll have a, you'll have a curve there of what you can do. Okay, exactly. Uh, so, uh, where are the uh, cards? Great question that I'm not going to answer. Okay. Uh, why did the Geth care about Andromeda? Now that's interesting. So, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was me. I'm all good. We're good. All right. I'm good. Uh, the Geth. Did they care about Andromeda? I don't know. They had a, a FTL telescope pointed into dark space uh, in the general direction of Andromeda. Were they interested in Andromeda or the dark space in between? I don't know. All right. Uh, let's see. Can you tease some stuff about the Nexus Cultural Hall? Um, yeah. So, so we're gonna have a lot of new players, as we, we hope we're gonna have a lot of new players that aren't familiar with Mass Effect. And the cultural hall is there to let you understand, like, what is an Asari? What's a Turian? What's a Solarian? What's their deal? Uh, how long has humanity been part of the sort of interstellar community? Um, and, of course, as we get to know new people in Andromeda, it's a, a place to connect with them as well. All right. Uh, can you really play poker with the crew, or is that just periodically updated text? Uh, there is an actual poker game you can have with a particular uh, squad mate. That's awesome. Uh, let's see, guys. We're going to start wrapping up because I know we have we can, uh, Ian's here to do some signings. Uh, get, let's get some last questions. Uh, somebody wants to know, will there be actual male and female private parts shown since the game is rated for full nudity? <laughs> Don't you love your job? I you do. you got a degree. I you are do. professional, sir. Is, um, Tell us about the penises. <laughs> you know, uh, He's never going to agree to come I, on I stream with me again. He's like going to be like, no, no, guys. No, there, there's, uh, no. wow. Yeah, so, <laughs> in fairness, there's a couple romance scenes that I haven't even seen yet, so maybe those are hiding the really good stuff. But uh, but for the most part, no, they're not that explicit. Okay. It's about, if you play Dragon Age Inquisition, that's roughly where we are in terms of how much we show or don't show in, in the, uh, the more explicit uh, any celebr celebrities in the game as characters in the game, like Chobot? Uh, not like that, no, not not from the face game. Okay. Uh, how does the Milky Way species manage to fully decode the Andromeda Andromeda species language in such a short amount of time? Uh, they haven't actually. So bear in mind that when we show stuff from the game, we're often showing pieces from different spots. You don't start the game actually having all the language figured out. Yeah. And there are people that have been there uh, in Andromeda before you, from the Milky Way. And so some of them have had time to work out the, the language. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. What can you tell us about the Scourge? Uh, at the beginning of the game, you don't know a whole lot about it, aside from, hey, it's an energy cloud and it's bad. Um, so I don't want to tell you more than that. Okay. Um, will we get a voice actor trailer? Voice actor trailer. Not sure what that means. I guess a, a thing about the vo the voice actors doing their voicing, <laughs> doing their acting. Doing, doing their voicing. I <laughs> like it. Um, voicing. I have no idea. We, I haven't seen that on the list, but maybe it's coming. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. La, 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 la. Will there be enemies like the Thresher Maws? Uh, not exactly the Thresher Maw. They're not indigenous to Andromeda, but we do have something at, at that actually bigger than that scale that you can fight. Uh, did a ship on the way to Andromeda crash into a Reaper? That's a good question. 
Oh uh, yeah. Okay. I think you'd notice though what happened. Is there warp-like power? Uh, not directly, because like if we're gonna have a warp-like power, we just that warp. Yeah. Instead, we have aspects of what warp did incorporated into other abilities, from annihilation to throw. Okay. So, somebody coming into Mass Effect Andromeda never played any of the other Mass Effects. What do you think is pivotal for them to know? Uh, going into it, I think the big thing to know is you can't really make mistakes with building your character. The game is deliberately forgiving to let you try to experiment with different combinations, of different skill trees, different weapons that you try, until you land on something you really like. And even, even if you do find yourself like, oh, I'm level 10 and I've already spent all these points and things I don't like, the first respec is very, very cheap. It's in-game currency, it's not microtrans or something, but uh, it's very cheap to be the first one. Um, so, like, just try stuff. Don't, don't go, oh, I, I have to be, uh, you know, a soldier. It's the only thing I can do. Woe is me, single tier. No, uh, you actually have all sorts of options. Give it a try. I think you'll find something cool you like. Uh, can I be a vanguard and have Korra, or still be very and still be very powerful? Oh, absolutely! It's actually a lot of fun to spec Korra well into charge, be a vanguard, put yourself into charge, and if you time it right, you can actually do the you know the hammer and anvil thing and like jointly charge an enemy. It's kind of satisfying. All right. Uh, will we get tune wheel locks? Locks us like it is in DA2. Uh, no, no, the tone wheel always remains fully available at all times. Sometimes the choices you make will affect what Ryder will automatically say in following, following bits of the conversation, similar to DA2, but it's not locking it over the course of, you know, an act of the story or something like DA2 did. Uh, let's see, M920 Kane. I'm assuming that's... That's one of the heavy weapons. Uh, no, we do not have the cane in this game, at least not now. I could totally see us having that down the road. Okay. Uh, quote a character without telling us who it is. I have a bad feeling. <laughs> there you go, guys. You got what you wanted. Uh, will there be heavy weapons? Uh, we do have a heavy weapon. So if you remember the rocket launcher from ME3 multiplayer, um, we have something kind of equivalent to that, taking a page from the Mass Effect 1 grenades, like a disc that launches and explodes, uh, but it's easier to control. Uh, you have that in multiplayer, and then in single player, that's a consumable that you can get and launch and do crazy amounts of damage. Cool. Um, let's see, how much explorable area is on the Nexus compared to the Citadel in previous games? That's a good question. Um, and the Citadel's vary quite a bit over the course of the games. I'd say it's at least as big as the, the as any of the Citadels in the trilogy. It's, in terms of playable space, quite large. Okay. Is Korra Tim's daughter? <laughs> you know, there are multiple people with the same last name in this world. It's true. There, there's lots of Smiths. Uh, do none of the... MW species use the Mass Effect tech? Uh, no, with well, Mass Effect tech, yes, but not the relays, so that's, that's yeah. what we're yeah, yeah, but the relays, uh, as far as we can tell anyway, don't exist, at least in this part of Andromeda. Uh, but Mass Effect fields, yeah, I mean, all, all our technology is built around it. Okay. Um, I think we're going to start wrapping it up so you can get to your signings. Yeah. Thank you so much for dealing with my technical issues all good, and all the you. awkwardness. And, you know, great echoes, you yeah, know. you got some great <laughs> echoes and great sound bits. I'm sure there's tons of gifts and everything else on there. Yay, Abby. Oh, um, again, thank you for coming well, on to talk great. about Mass Effect Andromeda. And guys, make sure you check out the game. It is on March 23rd. You can pre-order it on uh, EA Early Access, I believe, right, right yep. now. Uh, come to the playable at the lounge, the Bioware lounge. Come to the Bloodshake G booth. Check out the Mass Effect Andromeda keyboard, mouse, headset. And I'm forgetting something, but I'll think about it. Keyboard, mouse, headset. No, no, that's it. No, there's no other thing. No. <laughs> no, there's no other thing. All the things. <laughs> All the things.